this is my uh, second time recording this because the audio messed up on the first one. So, uh, yay. <laughs> These things happen. Hey ho, let's get the video. So this is a video I wanted to make for a while now. It's a, a talk through of the one like commercial I did with my mum, aka Rasmataz Rezing. And I really used it as a chance to practice and experiment with like a one light setup. Just using her lamp that was that's already on her desk. Nothing too crazy. Almost every time I've walked past her, her mini studio, I've looked at that lamp and thought, hmm, I could probably create quite a cool like uh, short film just using that one light. And I thought, why not? Let's practice. Um, let's try and learn something new with it. So we did. Uh, I shot the commercial using the Sony a7 III using the Sony 40mm f2 and the 85mm f1.8. I used the log profile S-Log2 for it, which is a risk when you're shooting something that's so low light, but um, I was confident I could make use of it. Um, and there's a couple of shots I'm not too happy with, but you're gonna get that with every project you do, you're not gonna be 100% happy. Um, so. Yeah, at the end of the day, I worked with what I had uh, in terms of equipment. Obviously, it's always going to be helpful having more lights, but the, the point of the, the practice was uh, to just use one light. So uh, that's what we did. It was cool to create a story out of something that doesn't scream of story, like making jewellery isn't a clear A to B. Really emphasise that full circle moment of the story by turning on and off the lamps. Turn on the lamp to start the video, and then it finishes with the lamp turning off. And I thought this would be a cool way to to give that full circle story moment and uh, make you feel satisfied after watching it. Like, oh, that was a start, that was the end. That was pretty cool, we just watched the whole process. It was pretty difficult changing the angles. Um, the, the main thing I had in my head the whole time, obviously because it is a small room, that I wanted to go from wide to, to close, wide to close, and keep kind of altern alternate, alter alternating that um, between the 40 mil and the 85. I, I did tell with the idea of using the 24 millimeter for the overhead shots, but it was just a little bit too wide. Were, you saw too much and I really wanted to emphasize the video on being really super closed in and um, and almost me only showing you the, the desk and the subject, AKA my mum. And something different I did for this one was almost prepare me for my new camera, um, was I only did manual focus. So that whole video is shot on manual focus. I didn't use any autofocus. It, it really gave me that flexibility to, to pull to your attention to exactly what I wanted you to see in that moment, which is, is super is super rewarding when you get it right. Obviously it's harder in the moment when you're holding this big rig and you're, you're changing focus, but, um, but no, it was super fun and, uh, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. When I wanted to, uh, get particularly wide on the 40 mil. I kind of just stepped out of the room and uh, gave myself like a meter between me and the door, um, especially to get the the opening and the ending shots. Um, I think it was important for me to almost establish the scene um, as well as starting the video with, with the lamp turning on. For the grade, obviously, uh, as I mentioned before, I shot an S-Log2, which essentially flattens all the color and um, allows a lot more room in post to uh, change the colors and play with the contrast and the shadows and the highlights. And obviously because it was a darker environment and a, a darker scenario, I was able to lean a lot into the greens for the shadows um, and the like tungent orange for the highlights. And I really like how that contrasted through the whole video. I recently watched the Batman when I shot this in March and uh, that, that really inspired me to, to create that kind of like dingy edges and that blurred edges that you see in the video. Um, obviously they use like vintage lenses to get that look and I just kind of cheated and put a bit of blur around the edges. Um, but I think it really like immerses you into the video and almost gives it that kind of dreamy look anyway, which is what I was going for. One thing I did find a bit tricky was the outside shot. So I used the 85 millimeter for them because I really wanted to use a different angle rather than just like a wide and a close up. I thought, how can we split them up at the start? Because the start was a lot of the same. So I thought I literally went outside on the 85 and I kind of swayed like left to right to give that kind of movement. I could have used a tripod for the whole video, but I chose to go handheld to give it that more like rugged feel rather than super stabilized or just on tripod shots. With the music, I actually spoke to my mum about this quite a lot before we started the project and she was very clear on the fact she didn't want something too sad and I didn't want something that was too like upbeat and happy and that kind of like cliche commercial kind of feel. I'm pretty happy with, with what we landed on. It was a kind of like a, 
uh, a middle ground between the two. And it was actually really hard trying to find a song that uh, had a slow start before the light turning on because I wanted that build up and then the light comes on and then it starts going into the video. Um, I actually think I chose one from Epidemic Sounds, which is where I get all my music from. I ended up slicing a, a song into three and kind of merged them together. And uh, I don't think you would know that I sliced it into three. I think I've hidden it pretty well. But I, I pretty much do that in every video. I slice up pretty much every song I choose from Epidemic and uh, and kind of make it into my own so it fits the, the often one minute video length. But yeah, I, in particular, I'm super happy with how the uh, the start of this video is because it, it proper draws you in with the light switch going on. Sound effects actually used in the video all came from the camera. Obviously, there wasn't anything too crazy in it, a bar, a timer, and a couple of like chair movement or anything like that. That all came straight from the camera. So uh, we were pretty much silent as we filmed it. So I could pretty much use everything that, um, that I shot to use in the video, which is pretty cool. It just doesn't always happen a lot of the time we're using I'm just scrapping the whole audio you get and you're, you're chucking in all these different sounds but I, I think it works with just using some uh the sounds that come straight out of the camera using my external microphone it's really good to do projects like these where you just have full creative control and you can kind of just have a play and if you make a mistake it's, it's not the end of the world i definitely learned a lot just using one light and the sort of looks you can get out of it and i definitely won't be the last time i just use a one light source my mum loved it as well so that's always a bonus that, that she, she can whack it on her on her business page and uh, and hopefully get a few more sales for her jewelry which by the way if you want to have a look then uh, i will link it down below this project definitely reminded me of what could be done with just one light and, and not over complicating it with loads of different lights obviously having loads of different lights would make any video better but it was super fun to just experiment with with one light and it won't be the last time i'd like make spec ads if you want to call it that or, or just short films uh, let me know if you enjoyed this sort of uh kind of breakdown video on how my creative process works I quite like looking back at the videos I made and kind of talking about them, so I might do more. Anyway, um, hopefully you're having a good week, month, year, start of the year, as always, um, and I will see you soon.